taken to wearing waistcoats now. I think it's time, as the weather has changed, to put away the old woolen tank tops and switch to something a little light, uh, but also smart for the later spring and the summer and possibly the autumn. No doubt on those cold days, I'll still get out the old tank tops. I love the tank tops. They are, um, for me, something which talks of England. I don't know if other nationalities wear tank tops in the way that we do, but I love them. But I seem to be losing weight left, right and centre. I don't know if that's a thing to worry about. Um, and so I've noticed that even the lovely tank tops seem to be just hanging loose on them. I may have to commission uh, Mary Hammond to make me some more, but just that little bit smaller uh, going forward, an expression that I'm not very happy with. But anyway, um, yes, I bought myself this one. I think it's very smart and I'm trying to keep myself looking smart, particularly on these videos. I wanted to mention a couple of thank yous in today's video because people are very kind. They send me all sorts of bits and bobs from time to time and I really do appreciate it. And if I don't get to mention it on the video, it's only because I'm a little bit absent minded from uh, time to time. So uh, first one is this rather delightful book, The A303. Uh, by Tom Fort, sent to me by Gary and Kirsty. Apparently they really enjoyed it and they said I might enjoy it and it's true. It's a fascinating look at a very well-known and well, I was going to say well-loved, I don't know, not everybody will necessarily love the route. It's a road that runs, I think, from Basingstoke down to Honington in, uh, well, in Somerset, isn't it? In, down in Devon. Um, yeah, Devon, I think that is. And it's a, a fast route that goes past Stonehenge. So anyone who's gone past Stonehenge will have been on the 303. Fascinating story of that and um, all related things. And I thought, you know, whenever I read these sort of books, I think, oh, yeah, that make a great series of videos and go off and investigate it. That would be fun. Um, there's also a book called the uh, A272. Uh, I think Linda Kane sent me a copy of that some time ago. And that, again, would make a fascinating series of videos. And, there's prop and I, somebody sent me a, years ago um, an unpublished book he'd written because I wanted to do a project on the Great North Road. And I've got that somewhere. That would make a fantastic one. That's from London to Edinburgh, um, which has got now the A1M and the not the M1, but the A1M and the A1, uh, be fascinating. And all the old coaching inns and places that were there that have gone and how it's changed and developed. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're saying, well, wait a minute, you've still got the Sussex border path to do. Don't forget that. And, and yes, I do. And that's a long term project as well. But I do like that idea of following routes because we've been walking and traveling and taking commerce across ever since we, well, basically since we could walk. And it's fascinating to see where people have walked before. So thank you so much, Kirsty and Gary. That's very kind. I also want to thank um, Stuart Mercer for sending me in some wax for my walking boots to keep them waterproof. Thank you so much. That's very kind of you. Sent me a lovely letter here. Um, he's, as I say, Stuart Mercer, no relation as far as I know to, of course, Philip Mercer, who wrote those stories in 1834 that occasionally I do some readings from um, uh, the, uh, what was he, a, a curate, I think. Anyway, um, that's going to be very useful. Thank you so much. And uh, Linda Kane. <laughs> <laughs> Linda Kane sent me this wonderful little card, but more important than that, she sent me this, which is a knitting pattern for a waistcoat. She heard that I was interested in trying to do some knitting. She said, well, what about a waistcoat? But you might need to start with a scarf first and work your way up because they're quite tricky to do. This is very 1940s. It's got gentlemen with a pipe and everything. Very English. Um, in there and it t tells you how to make it. There's a, a stocking stitch and a basket weave. Yeah, basket weave for a basket case, I think. So thank you so much, uh, Linda. I really appreciate all those wonderful gifts. Thank you.
I am just finishing off a little job here of four curtains which will go on the back panels of the van. Oops. And trying not to make a cock up. I've already made one cock up by stitching two sets of curtains together because I didn't realise I'd picked up both of them together. But I have unpicked it and managed to, to do that now. And there we go. So these are, oh, that's not very good. Never mind. These are fake curtains. These are like they're pretend pleated. Lots of little spare bits of cotton all over the place, which drives me mad. Um, there's obviously a lot more to this game than meets the eye because all my stuff has tons of these little hairs and threads of cotton. But anyway, we've got two. I've got two more to make and then I'm going to staple gun them to the back of the van. So I'm going to crack on with this for a bit and get that done. And then I want to make a hanky for Tim Tricker. So I'm now sitting in the van, as you can see, I'm actually sitting on my loo, um, but uh, it's all right, the seat is down and there's a blanket on the top of it. I need to actually make a little thing that goes over it so it disguises it when you open the door, but less of that. I'm actually wearing a shirt that uh, perfectly matches <laughs> this uh, greeny, uh, light green, whatever colour it is, uh, which is a bit daft because um, a contrasting colour would be good, but never mind. Now, I have my curtains finished here, so I'm going to see if I can staple gun them, staple gun here, into. Now, there's no fancy filming on this one, uh, I'm afraid, because I want to try and get it done. Now, the reason I'm doing this on the inside rather than doing this with the doors open on the outside is I noticed that the rim of the door obviously butts up here. And when I was positioning these with magnets, I noticed that they were um, getting caught in the door stuff. So really I've got to try and attach them in a way so that I know that when the door is shut, they work perfectly well. So if I get a magnet here, I can show you a vague impression. Luckily, these magnets are terrific of what I'm thinking that these should look like. Uh, so they're fake and pleated. And somehow, there we go. Um, so I'm thinking probably something like that, staple gunned in, as long as I get these the right way round. In fact, that one's back to front. So, because you, you don't want to see the seams and things. I think that's, oh no, that was the right way around. Oh well, that was a pretty poor show. So something like that, but staple gunned. Oh, maybe it's got to go. I'm trying not to show this side, you see. It's got to be like that really, hasn't it? So let's try one. Let's see what happens. Staple gun here. Did that do anything? Nothing. <laughs> uh, let's try down the side here then to start with. Ah, oh, that got it. There we go. Put one more in. It's a shame because they don't really want to see the staples, of course, but I can't really think of any other way of doing it. Let's take these magnets off and see what happens now. So, oh yes, I think they've got to be staple gunned down the side here as well. Let's try that, see what happens. Then I've got to see if I open the door whether that works, but I'm going to staple gun the rest up and come back to you. Ah. 
And so I have managed now to get them all done. And I thought I would demonstrate, oh, just this last little bit over here needs doing. Don't want that flapping in the wind. That's a tire going, no, no. So there we are. It's, so I need something up there to hide this bit naffness. But it's the impression, isn't it? That's what you're looking for. And at least now I can go out with the boys uh, camping and I won't feel quite so just a man in the back of a, in a van. <laughs> Thanks. So let's have a look at how the potatoes are doing, shall we? Because you may remember in a previous video some weeks ago, I was growing potatoes. These were very kindly given to me by one of my viewers, Steve Mitchell. Um, these are, what have we got here? Maris Piper and Charlotte potatoes. And we planted them in, Julia and I. And now these are going great guns. I probably need to water them actually. So um, I'm not quite sure when they need harvesting, but um, we're gonna look at that and some other plants I've got but let's get the water on first. I don't know if um, potatoes are like other plants that if you water them at the wrong time of day, um, they get scorched, maybe they do, but these are in the shade pretty much 24 seven because my house is north facing. So I'm only gonna water the the bases anyway so that I don't spray them on the leaves I'm not quite sure but all I know is potatoes apparently are very hungry for water and I've got six of these plants And when I say six of the plants, of course, I actually mean six bags, six bags, Mary's Piper and Charlotte's. So now over here, I've got some other plants that I'm trying to grow, but this may not be the best place because I think these need the sun. And these are tomatoes. I've put them up here on this windowsill temporarily, really, whilst I was fiddling around with my um, logs in the back of the garden. That's actually a bean plant, so don't look at that. These two, these were given to me by Tim Tricker, but I've got some others. They probably need watering as well, but I think I might move them into the sun. And this little fellow is a butter bean. So these don't get the sun very often. I'm just going to put them on the floor down here. I really need to to fix something because the sun comes down here uh, maybe over here would be better um, I've got some smaller plants here these are little tomato plants different varieties and some parsley uh, what I really need to do is build a bit more of a storage thing in here so that I can store the logs underneath and have plants on the top but for the moment they're just going to stay on the floor until I can do that but these are all doing reasonably well Well, I know it's all been a little bit sedate in uh, this video, um, but I pretty much finished. I'm quite happy with the way the kitchen now looks with the with the new curtains and everything else and the way that the van has uh, come together, which has been brilliant. We've had a bit of a blowy, windy week this week, so I've not been able to get out and do as much as I wanted to, but I have got some things planned uh, for later on in the year. So it's pretty much time to get out and about and do stuff still stuff to do in the house of course and i will get around to doing some of that and bringing you with me when it's miserable days but um that's the way the channel is developing an english life the quest for england all of that uh, coming here on this channel so i hope you will stick with me as we get further into the spring and towards the summer we get the van out and go exploring once again. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this 
relaxed little video. Hope you like my waistcoat, it's rather swish, isn't it? Um, and I will see you next time. Take care, look after yourselves. I'm gonna make myself a cup of coffee and sit down and have a read of A303. Why not? Take care, bye-bye for now.